Welcome to the Hole in the Head podcast. In this episode, the boys offer some community service. When buying an old car or motorcycle, there's some surefire ways to be absolutely annoying to a seller. So after a quick catch up on projects, we're going to dive into a much needed PSA, how to buy a motorcycle. Hope you enjoy. Well, hey, Blaine, um, it is time for some holes in the head. Andy, I've got a moral dilemma right off the top we have to discuss. Shoot. Okay. Um, you know, um, since my daughter wrecked all my cars, um, I decided to buy some more. And so I got her another BMW 535i. Uh, That's right. Wait, that was the upgrade. You upgraded from the, what was it, a 530? Yeah, we had a 528. So it's five thirty five. So this is other way. Um, so we've got the, a sister car for her. Um, I'm going through it. Um, had it running. Now it doesn't run. It starts up and dies. I got this thing. Someone says, "Well, you better check and see if there's uh, any mice in there, um, eating up all your wiring." I thought, "What's the odds of that?" I opened up the the uh, glove box, Andy, and there's this cutest little mouse with big eyes just look at me i mean just old enough to have fur was probably pink yesterday you know and now it's finally got its first little fur and it's just looking up at me with kind of sleepy curious eyes and i know that him and his family ate through the wiring um in that area of the car because the glove box is full of stuffing right you know so they've been around there so the whole family's been in there feasting and so of course um they they must be eradicated but i eradicated i get yeah good one um but it's such a cute little animal yeah that's tough like how do you but, i mean but it's so cute but that little fucker ate uh, eight cure you know eight wiring and you know the, the casings of wiring and they, they have to die for that yeah. but i don't want to kill that little guy but i don't want him <laughs> to eat my wiring so andy what do you do um sounds like you got new pets you get yourself a little happy trail and and just bring them on in They're yeah part of the do, family. You do, do you do a live trap and try to relocate um or do you just if the car would run i would just put the, put a hose in the exhaust pipe and put it in the car right <laughs> and then send, <laughs> just send them to heaven um but it just seems so cruel that little cute i mean he looked right at me you know what those big eyes look like i mean they're little yeah. tiny eyes that's what it is they're not even big eyes but they're just you know they haven't well, seen you, they haven't seen this, evil yet you know, <laughs> if you zoom out a little bit and think about it, um, yeah. you're going to at the end of the day, if you kill this family of rodents, yeah. you're yeah. killing an entire family of living sentient beings because your fifteenth car is not running. Are they sentient? Or <laughs> really? Do you think are, are we going how, that far? Yeah, I mean, they may <laughs> they have personalities. I'm sure. I don't know if they can do math, but you know, I like just to. Just, you know, in terms of the, think, the karma of it all, pun intended. Are they again. sentient enough? Yeah. If you showed, if I put a little mirror in there and they saw themselves in the mirror, the guy would go, oh, my whiskers are sticking up. Or would he yeah. have any idea that's not another mouse? Well, that, I mean, there's a on. reason he chose the BMW, because he has taste. Yeah. You could give him yeah. that. Yeah. Well, okay. So, well, anyway, well, moral dilemma. I've got, a, I've got to relocate a mouse family or or eradicate or kill them. Now, here's mm-hmm. the funny thing is, is I did I caught a full-size mouse in my Range Rover. Oh, I'm killing! I'm killing that fucker. He's he's yeah. he's, he's old enough to know. Right? He's old enough to know better. I want That's the world cousin. to get out. That that yeah. one I want dead, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave his body hanging by a string. You know, Just to show from everybody. the door handle, thinking, yeah, this is you know, this is like when you used to go into the harbor and see all the pirates hanging. That's what yeah. I'm gonna do to that dude. Yeah, little mice are like, oh, cousin Larry. Yeah, we told him, told him not to hang out in British cars. Well. Yeah. Okay, so so have you have you made any headway on that BMW, or is it just getting it in, getting it sort of uh, no. ex- exposed? It, it, took, and... it took me this long to find out. Um, so I, I'm always confused about which version of the fuel injection I have, the Bosch. Is it Jetronic or Motronic or D-Jetronic or whatever? And, of course, automotive guys, BMW guys especially, will know this inside and out. I, I do not because I, you know, I mean, I'm acquainted with the fuel injection. I wish I wasn't. Um, I'm that old. But anyway, um, so I I finally have found a 15-step troubleshooting manual uh, for the 
I think I'm, I'm afraid to say which version I have because I'm sure someone will correct us if that we're wrong. But anyway, I now have a plan to check 15 steps with a multimeter to see if I can find out why it starts perfectly every time, runs for two seconds, and dies. Um, hmm. And it's not fuel related. Um, so I'm assuming um, that we've had ma mouse eat signal wires or I actually have some other problem. But anyway, I have a, you know, a way forward. I have two things to do. I have to relocate a mouse family and I have to go through a 15 step troubleshoot sequence to see if I can make it run. So that's where that's, that's the status of that. You know, it's a little frustrating as if that were a 60s motorcycle and it ran for a second or two and then died, you would know exactly what was wrong. Yeah. You know, this is, um, I keep looking, I keep telling my wife, you know, it's like, I have enough stuff here for me the rest of my life. Um, but I really want to find her a credible, absolute classic daily driver that, like you said, is if she said, oh, it was running while I was driving and I came to a stop sign and it quit, you know, and it didn't idle anymore. It's like, oh, now it won't, it won't start. It's like, I know the three things to check. You know, I'll mm -hmm. be right there. I'll have I'll have everything I need in my little black bag. Yeah. All right. And I'll probably get it. Um, but, uh, you know, on my modern Range Rover the other day, uh, we parked it and then couldn't get the couldn't shift it out of park. Huh. You know, is that, and, uh, is that the transmission solenoid or shifter solenoids? Oh, it's the, one of the lockout solenoids. Yes, okay. uh, it is because it's got to it's got to see like if you have a brake light out, sometimes it doesn't work, you know, because uh, it's got to see signal from that the brakes on before they let you shift it. Because now we have the man telling us when we can shift, <laughs> not the, the man nanny, telling the car when to shift. The nanny shift of the British yeah, motor. Yeah, the because, nanny of, state. because of that state, you know. So anyway, that one you have to show up with your laptop and, uh, you know, Internet hookup and um and try five things i actually i did figure it out um and uh, there is a little interrupt switch that obviously you, you have to step on the brake and it has to see that the brake is on before it'll pull out this little pin to let you shift it uh, you mm -hmm. can also do it manually if you take off the center console down there and you uh you know you can see that switch working or you can push it you know with a tool to get it into gear once right so uh, now I have, when I put the man, the console back together, I've drilled a nice little discrete hole and made a little aluminum push rod that I keep in the glove box. From So from now on, next time that happens, just take the aluminum push rod out of the glove box, stick it down the yeah. hole until you hear manual something click. Override. Yeah. A manual override, which I would, everything should have a manual override, in my opinion. Well, oh, the other, um, oh, also too, I want to say, um, just like the, uh, do you know how easy it is to open your fuel door when it when it when it uh, uh, won't open because it's, uh, we have to have we're so uh, goddamn lazy that we have to have the fuel door on the car to put gas in. It has to open by itself, right? Um, you, we can't go back there and open it. I mean, how yeah. archaic is that? You can't. So you got to have a solenoid open it, right? Of course, it doesn't. Um, so then, what do you do about that? Well, of course, you have to take off the inner fender. And on some cars, there actually is a little lanyard. There's a little pull string that they leave in there so that you yeah. can pull it open the door. And I'm just thinking, uh, why, why wasn't that the default? Why wasn't that? The, why wasn't that the default? Or better you know, yet, and, just a little hole for your finger to pull the door open. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I understand the thinking. Well, I mean, obviously, if, do, do you live in a place where if you leave your car on the street, somebody will take the fuel out of it? No, I live in a, well, they've stolen my catalytic converter. Okay. So. Yeah. I was going to say the days of stealing the fuel out of it by opening the fuel door are gone because someone stole the fuel out of my daughter's Mercedes. They just got underneath it and drilled a hole in the tank. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. They just That's... get under there with a, with a, people with a Makita suck, dude. God, just to drain, people. drain the fuel out of it. You know, thank God it was, I should say, thank God. It's a, you know, obviously they're looking for cars with plastic tanks because you yeah. don't, I don't know if that gene pool um, is aware that some cars do not have a plastic tank. I'm sure to sure they do. Um, but I mean, how, now, you know, anyway. there's a, there's that line that from on John Travolta and pop pulp fiction where someone keys his car and he says it would be worth them keying it just for me to catch him doing it. Yeah. Um, and I, th those kinds of things, like it would be worth the car. And this isn't wishing harm on people who might be in a situation it, but it's wishing harm on people who might be in a situation where it would have been worth the car exploding 
in a fiery mass of gasoline. Just oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, 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 no. You, I understand that. Bitch. No, no. I I understand exactly what you're saying. So there's you know there's sort of this desperate desperate part of human nature. But by the time you're into stealing someone else's gas, you got some shit going on, right? And yeah. so in some ways it's like, okay, does that person then need to be, you know, go up in a ball of fire, um, you know, for that, for have being stuck in that situation. Now maybe they put themselves in it, which I'm pretty sure they bear some responsibility for that situation. Yeah. But nonetheless, m- my luck would be that the car would go up in a fireball. All right. And burn down all the cars near it and the carport <laughs> and your right? insurance. Would, yeah. At, at my daughter's apartment. Yeah. And our insurance gets dinged and then the guys would get away with it. So the only, yeah. I, w- I would say this, the only reason I would, feel okay about it going up in a ball of flames is if the guy the guy got all of his at least uh, got all of his hair off of his balls burnt off <laughs> now i do i do I, want my i want my pound of pubic hair if someone's gonna it. start my car on fire i'm gonna make the connection here between our mouse family and this poor yeah i know, you know i know the poor kid who's just trying to get to you know to school with some gas yeah you know? yeah no you're it's right. not his fault that you're out of you know, know, out of convenience. I'm I'm one of those people that has plenty of com- plenty of compassion for animals, but zero for people. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I get it. I'm I'm having uh not to rub it in, but I'm having a great BMW week. Um, yeah. I sent you a video. I saw your video, and you know, I I just love to um to give you shit and there's nothing I can give you shit for because it just looks perfect and it looks fun. It looks like such a killer deal. I'm absolutely jealous, but, but, but kind of happy for you. Not, not so much like I wanted to kill you the last time you got something I wanted, but this time I'm really glad you got it. I don't want to kill you. Uh, I saw the video. You were great in the video. You look great. The bike looked great. Everything about it was great. It did help me. It helped. It helped me. Yeah. It, it elevated the experience, uh, my experience on this earth. Uh, for for 15 20 minutes i felt better about myself and about the world well so for for the listener um that's that's a 1965 bmw r60/2 that we picked up over the summer um but it's running ready to go uh that okay that said it's running it will go around my block i'm not yeah. ready for a pie run yet um the tank still has some rust scale in it and I've changed the filters twice already, you know, uh, mm-hmm. little inline fuel filters. So it's, it's coming, but for, you know, yanking it out of a, a barn with a engine on the floor with, you know, cousin, cousin mice climbing all over it. Pretty proud. Like that's, that was a, that was an effort. That's just, you should be proud. And, but, but in that motorcycle, it just looks like, um, and there, there are people who are not into vintage at all, you know, and, you know, they, they obviously, I mean, there's a motorcycle industry exists because people want something new and current, but the look of that bike is how a vintage bike should look. I mean, everything yeah. is right about it and there's nothing wrong with it. And the look would never have to change for it to be pleasing to me for the rest of my life. And I don't care if you put it next to the, the latest, you know, carbon fiber, um, you know, um, super sleek design. Um, none of them, none of them are interesting. I mean, you, you, you take a, you take what you think is a great looking bike, the, a modern bike, find something one or two years old. All right. I think this is a great looking bike. Like I like the Fantic Caballero. All right. That is a cool little mm-hmm. scrambler. It's awesome. We don't get to have it. I also like the Montessa four ride, which we don't get to have. I love that. Those are cool new bikes. I, I love those. But when you put them next to that 1965 R60, it's just like, Oh, I would rather have that BMW bike with, it's, a, with they're, the they're single seat. Animals, but yeah. Yep, they're totally different animals. Not comparable in the bikes, you know, experience at all. But just in terms of what do I want to look and feel like on a motorcycle, I just would want to be on that BMW. It is very polite. Like every BMW I've had, um, or, or, or the the most BMW of the BMWs that I've had, they've all felt very polite. And like, um, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. it, it you, know, you know what I mean? Like it, just even riding this one around, it's got, it's got good grunt and it picks up, but you're still upright. You're on this little solo seat. There's no room to slouch. It's not like a, a two up where you can kind of lean back or put your butt back on the pad and, and lean forward and get kind of aggressive. You're just by the nature of the bike, the way it's set up, you're, you're upright on this little seat and you have to have good posture. And so it's just yeah. A nice there's little. There's. I, I mean, I'm. I'm sure we can find a way that a hipster can ruin it. 
for us. But <laughs> for the most part, you just can't really pose on that bike. There's no posing allowed. I mean, and it's just like, what, what do you want to put loud pipes on it? That's goofy. What are you going to take the seat off and sit lower and put ape hangers on it? That's goofy. You know, I mean, everything you do would seem goofy except for leave it alone and ride yeah. it the way that it is. I mean, it's just, you know, they're, they're, oh. if you rode that down the street, the neighbors wouldn't go, ah, you know, fucking asshole, you know, um, <laughs> who's he think he is? That biker trash. That's the kind of biker trash you want in your neighborhood. You know, yeah. I'd follow. I'd follow that guy home and be kind. Of, try to be friends with him. <laughs> he, he looks like he has a uh, he has cheese before dinner. I don't that's think he. Of, yeah, I, I don't think, think he's selling guy. drugs. He's not running over <laughs> to pick up some some meth from a buddy. He's yeah. not doing that. Although, um, so that said, I have seen some guys do a, an R ninety conversion mm-hmm. into a slash two frame because you know it's got the sort of plunger. Yeah, 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 rear yeah. end. And I've seen guys put in an R90, and there's a guy in um, it, it, one of the Facebook groups. I'm on the slash two sort of groups, um, and I and he showed some pictures of his bikes, and they're amazing. Like they they have the same lines as the R90, but they he's he's hardtailed one or two, but he's kind mm-hmm. of made them. They lend themselves into being really cool bobbers. I would never say yeah. that about a BMW. I know, I know. Um, but I love them. I love scrambler bobbers that are BMWs. I hate every other, other kind. Like, <laughs> like someone said, well, you, you know, you'd probably really like to get a Harley, you know, a Harley Sportster. And I'm thinking, no, I would not. Um, I, I, you know, yeah. I mean, I get the fact, you know, and you, and I don't care how many different things you can buy and put on a Harley Davidson or build a custom. Cause you know, there's a million different ways to get a Harley Davidson and, but none of them appeal to me, but every BMW, Every BMW of every kind, I love. When, when, <laughs> yeah. when you know the guys do the ridiculous thing, and they, you know, it's just got a little tiny seat and knobby tires. I love it. I love yeah. it when they make them into you know faux dirt road bikes. They're not, but they look like it. I love it. I, you know, I love it when they are actual. You know, all the uh, the Paris Doc R racer family. You know, of the GS. I love it. The only I don't like the new GS is n- nearly as much. But there's a, it's just hard not to look at any v- BMW and not love it. Yeah, I mean, even Although, even the goofy, even the goofy old school ones with the wind jammer fairings, you know, or the yeah. Luftmeister fairing, which I think is oh, what a what a tragic thing to have to ride. Um, but still, I just love looking at it, and I can appreciate yeah. it. You know, that said, not to change, not non sequitur here, but you mentioned right. Harley, and while I would not get a Sportster, I, I kind of, I, I, I'll say it, I do have a certain percentage of curiosity and interest in an early shovel head like a big twin or mm-hmm. you know something sort of you know pre-terrible harley just i'm interested in it i'm not i'm not i wouldn't say that i'm like i want a harley in that sort of lifestyle but i'm kind of interested in it and it's it comes from watching the the um the wheels through time guy yeah yeah, was, yeah, uh, yeah 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 and, and yeah. watching him restore knuckleheads and 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 old shovels and panheads like if the cutoff line is 1950 that means yeah. everything's 1949 or older. They're all lovely. Those I yeah. totally get. Yeah, yeah, I get those. So I, I, I'll just, I'll fess up to that. I, I have an interest to it, but given, given the choice of the, yep. the R60 again or an old shovel head or something like, I, I, I anyway. Enough well, this that. sort, of, this, this sort of, this sort of brings up what was going to be our next segment. I don't know if you're ready for that or not, but, um, uh, I get a thing on my note, my phone that says, "How many? Does your phone tell you how much you've been on the phone that week?" You were on the I phone. Don't, no, I turned that off. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> no. And I don't I don't care. I don't care if it tells me I've been on there for 35 hours a week because I, it's like I hunt Facebook. I hunt uh, Craigslist. I mean, I do this every day, right? So to mm-hmm. me, this is, it doesn't, I don't look like, I don't feel like I'm a phone addicted person, but I do hunt deals every day and parts and everything. So, but um, it, it does sort of bring up the fact that I, I believe that I spend at least, at least three hours a week um, oh, sure. trolling, trolling Craigslist and, and, you know, and sometimes, sometimes my usage gets up to four and that's all looking for bikes and cars. I mean, yeah. I don't really do anything else. <laughs> I don't have any other social media presence or whatever. So, uh, I'm always looking to buy something Yeah, and I don't need to buy anything for the rest of my life, but I'm still looking to buy. Well, we are, um, same. Same. I'm out yeah. of room. I don't have spare money. I certainly don't have a lot of time. 
but it's you know you might for the right thing that you might miss well i mean i can move some stuff around you, you know what i mean like i can accommodate a new thing oh yeah <laughs> you know no it, it's, it's got, there, there was a joke i can't remember how it's set up but there's a joke about a guy that um doesn't have it you know he's telling all his friends he doesn't have any money um and then they catch him gambling he goes well i got gambling money <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but he's but he's willing to borrow or beg or steal anything else, but not gamble. He's going to save his gambling money, and yeah, so that's, I'm kind that's of a in, different in, pocket. Yeah, that's that's this category. So well, maybe Eddie, so, let's let's talk about buying some stuff. It it does it does segue into, and that's 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 what uh we, we want to talk about today is I realize that maybe I don't know about you when selling things, I've had some of the worst experiences with humanity trying to sell a vehicle S selling anything online certainly but more so with vehicles are just I, I brings a, up the worst i had a guy selling a moped i said i'm firm on this price he comes out he looks at it he asked me for a buy a discount i go nope i'm firm at that price he goes let's see if it fits in my motorhome door so i help him load it through the motorhome door it fits in the, it's in his motorhome and he lowballs me when it's in the motorhome all right and at that point like I said, if he was a mouse, I'd try to relocate him. But, that, but, <laughs> but for a moment, I wish that guy would die in a car in a horrific motorhome fire. Yeah, we're not the, we're not as dark as all this usually, but yeah, but but, but that's to the point yeah. where it's like you know, man, we had a relationship here. This is an easy transaction, and you fucked it up. Like how? Yep. Okay. Yep. So so that said, um. I, I think we should do a PSA. I think we should do uh, a little quick tutorial. Just walk through some, you know, highlights given our, I mean, arguably extensive experience in, if not selling, at least buying yeah. motorcycles online. And okay. Well, in fact, um, do you want to just jump in? Because uh, I got an idea. Let's okay. So let's say let's just pull up. I'll pull up an ad that I've been. It's not like we're at a, we're at a loss of potential things to buy here. So I'll pull up one. Okay. We talked about uh, a Range Rover. I am Range yeah, Rover. You, uh, you need curious. one. Yeah, yeah, you need one. Uh, not this week, but I in, I ended up reaching out to the guy, and we can go through my process of what I did with this. It didn't work out, um, but I still feel good about how I handled it and what I did. So. We'll call up this 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 little ad. It's a 2006 Range Rover. The guy wants X number of dollars for it. It's a 2006 Land Rover, HSC, 167,000 miles, minor issues. Just kind of goes into some cursory stuff. Prompts for questions. You okay, I mean? do, like do, do, minor do, issues is what it says. Do you mind disclosing what it's going for? Uh, he's got or... six thousand. Okay, he's got right. listed for six thousand, and that's actually good. Yeah, so he listed yeah. for six thousand. Um, okay. What do you think my first email to him or message to him was not? Yeah. Uh, will you take 2200? Will you take 2200? <laughs> so, step 1, don't lead with an off don't just re don't just be don't don't even lead with a number. Lead with this, something like this. Hello. You know what I mean? Like lead with hey, I'm interested in the Range Rover. Hi. I'm yeah. Andy. <laughs> Just yeah. some sort of basic greeting instead of a, yes. a dollar sign. Uh, you know, I have this line that I use all the time. And and I hope, I mean, some of these may seem like they're manipulative, you know, uh, because, I mean, I'm trying to create rapport, right? And mm -hmm. so sometimes, yep. but almost always, um, if it's something uh, like that, uh, like a Range Rover or whatever, I almost always start out with, I love that Rover. That's my favorite color. That's, that's a great. cool. I've I've I wanted one of these for a long time. You know, hey, uh, can we? And, and that's just how I start, um, and, because that's my honest feeling about it. And we're gonna get around to price. I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna both talk about that at some point because that is the thorny issue. We got to get to the price, and yeah. we've got to see. We've got to find out what the bottom of it is. Um, but there's just a way to do it, polite. But I just start out with, I love that car. I always thought that was car. My dad had one of those, or whatever. You Whatever, know, yeah. I just want to start off on uh, this is I'm a I'm not a guy just trying to swoop in and get it. I love it. I love these in general, you know. So yeah. anyway, but I but I, I think it'd be wrong to do that as a method, though. 
Like, yeah, oh, well, I mean, oh, you know, the, Mal, I really, I really love your Craftsman lawnmower, man. Those are the coolest. Those are the best lawnmowers ever. Yeah. You know, all just leading up to get to, would you take fifty dollars for it? So I don't like yeah. that that play. But well, and I, I guess I'm sensitive to that too because I sold a couple bikes in Dallas, and they, they, before they sold, I had, you know, for the one guy who's going to buy it, there's six who reach out that are just ridiculous, and one of them ended up like. I mean, obviously that. Well, okay, we'll get to it. Read the ad, all that stuff. But let's let's okay. say, okay, you found this ad. You think, hmm, I'm interested in this. Yeah. Meaning, and and let's unpack that. I'm interested. Meaning, I have the money. I have some money, if not all of it. Maybe you're going to lowball them fine, but you're you're ready to spend money. Yeah. On that yep. thing. Okay. Yep. So that's AKA you're serious. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's helpful to, to be a person who can buy. Doesn't mean yes. that you will, but you can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, cause if, I mean, cause if that weren't the case, there's all sorts of stuff I'd reach out and be like, Hey, you know, like you 20 grand for your, uh, I'm, I'm interested. No, I'm not interested. I'm not going to buy that. Yeah. So don't even reach out. So, well, I'm inter- serious. Yes. I'm interested in a missile silo in Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I really am. I am interested in it, but I'm not going to buy it. I'm not gonna trade I'm money not, for it. Not I'm good not cash gonna money. Buy, but I would love to have it. <laughs> yeah. So all okay. Right. So so then here's here's where we can we can get into the giving the benefit of the doubt because there's some user interface issues that might that that I realized are the biggest pain in the ass without around Facebook Marketplace is that that hi is this available oh. button message button sometimes I swear to God just clicks on its own. I get messages like replying yeah. to things that I've sent and I'm, I'm not interested in your yeah. camping lantern, you know, like, I don't know how that happened. So, so those, let's say some of those come through and those are the, those are the reasons that you never hear back from, you know, the person who messaged you, maybe they did it on accident. Okay. So if we'll strike 30% off of that, but the stock, is it available you know, um, is this still for sale? Those kinds of things. If it's still up as an ad, chances are it's still for sale. It's pretty good. You can just assume that it is for sale. Fair? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And when you're on the other side of that, when you get all those things, is it available? Is it available? Is it available? And then you look at the things that you, that, you know, everybody who puts up a, a Facebook ad, if it's up here, it's available. If it's a, if right? the ad's up, it's available. Yes. Evident, evidently, you have to say that because I didn't say that on my last two Facebook things I sold, and I got yeah. all those stupid responses. And the other one was like, uh, "No low balls. Low low ballers will be ignored." Yeah. No <laughs> scammers. Know? No scammers. No scammers. <laughs> oh, oh, because all the scammers are going. Oh, look, we can scam like, this oh, guy because he's not aware. Next. But yeah, yeah. So, but evidently, okay. but I got. <laughs> A million responses from scammers, lowballers, and is it available? Well, you so. should have, you should have put it in your ad that you didn't want any of those guys. Yeah. So let's let's say so you got the thing, you see the ad, you're ready to go. You're you want to reach out, you want to initiate a conversation. You know it's available because the ad's up. I mean, he could he, he could have sold it and like and forgot to take it out. That happens. That happens totally. But mm-hmm. whatever. So you're ready to make the first move. Now I'm going to give you a situation, and you tell me what's Tell me w- what you would do. Okay. It's a Craigslist ad. Right. And where it says reply or reach out, whatever at the top. And it drops down. And it says email or text. Right. Which one do you choose? I text. Text. Yeah. Text. Um, email. Yeah. Email is for seriously old people. Right. It's so guys my age. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So every now and then you'll see somebody. That, but, but at least if someone says, if they, if they only have email, they probably check their email at least twice a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if they're text, they're going to almost see that almost twice an hour. Yep. And I I would argue that like some of the bikes and things and cars that we're after generally are owned or being sold by older people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not the rule, but, and I would argue that most of the people that I've reached out to in that sort of demographic would rather just jump on the phone. Then do a back and forth in an email. I was going to ask you, how soon do you do you initiate or get to voice, or do you go? Will you go all the way across Puget Sound 
to look at a Range Rover, drive all the way around, take the ferry, whatever you do, Whidbey Island or whatever, wherever it is you go in your fancy little life up there, <laughs> uh, to buy a, a, a Range Rover that's actually going to be rusty, but they're going to say it's not rusty. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, do you will you go see that but without talking to him? No, I'll call. I I need so so when yeah. the, when the that was a it was a loaded question because it says email or text. I'll text, mm -hmm. but then I'll call. I'll yeah. call. Yep. Just immediately yep. call that number. Um, because at the end of the day, if I'm selling something, I want to talk to you. Like, hey, yeah, let's let's because you're mm -hmm. gonna send me some questions and I'm gonna reply with it, and then we're gonna and then it's just hey, give me a call. Let's talk. Yeah. And 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 chances are within that first three or four exchanges of sentences, a price will not come up. Like a lowball offer will not come up. And so just yeah the the only reason i might bring up a um, i might bring up the price range and not not offer but range is that like right now i'm trying to buy um a pile of parts that are in north carolina all right i'm going to mm. go out and get them because i need them right away um and so i'm going to want to see uh, hey i'm coming from the other side of the world here so yeah. i don't want to drive all the way out there <laughs> you know, and find out that we're not going to get close. So in my but, mind, either I've got to say, listen, don't drive out there unless I'm going to be right at asking price. In this case, I am. I'll pay him what he's asking. That's fine. But in another case, I might say, hey, before I come out, um, where are you on your price? You got any room see, on that? That's, that's different right? than, hey, will you take 20 bucks? That's yeah. part of the conversation is the way I say, how are you on the price? You know what I mean? Like, at what, 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 you know, like, What's you you know how how firm are you whatever you want to ask it but you're, that's part of a conversation it's not a lowball offer it's not an assumption that they're flexible like you're asking if they're flexible yes and that because to be fair you have your own calculus that you have to do to because you're gonna because you got to get on the ferry you got to spend some gas you got to yep. get the trailer yep. on all that so just it's fair to negotiate but you don't lead with it right. Yes. Yeah. And and what I find is that most of the time, if people are flexible on the price, they'll almost volunteer that yeah. I'm looking for this, you know, so then I, I kind of know it's like, you know what, I bet we're going to get to it. So I don't I don't need to worry about it until I see it. And there have been times that I, I would be reluctant to say, OK, you're asking six thousand for it. Um, hey, are you know, are, are you going to be able to do something like that for five, you know, or fifty five or where are you on it? You know, or whatever. And then you if you threw out said that you'd go to fifty five. What if you get there and it's a rat? And it's, it's like, I'm not going 55. I, yes. like, I don't want to, I don't want to be in that situation. I don't want to back out of it, you, yeah. you know, at that point. Cause I've almost, I feel like I've committed myself at 55. So it's like, that's yep. why I don't want to talk about the number before I get there. Yep. Um, but I I'll do this. Um, uh, there's two things, two things that I do when I, when I want to send the signal that I'm, I'm your guy. One of them is I put my, um, on a text is it's, uh, obviously they have your phone number. Um, on, on marketplace, I'll put, I'll, I'll message the guy, my phone number. Yeah. And I'll say, okay, yeah. here's phone number. Here's name. Here's what town I live in because my area code doesn't match the town that I live in from my phone. Yeah. You know, Hey, I'm coming from Tucson. Here's my number or whatever the deal is, you know? Yeah. And because I, it means I, I want you to know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a guy. All right. I'm ready. Yeah. And then I'm ready to take this to the next level. And I don't mind, and I don't mind playing my card if it's something that I have to have by saying, uh, like I do this all the time. Hey, I'll give you your asking price. Um, because you know, like I bought some BMW engines, you know, a couple weeks ago, I'm going to give that guy, I don't care what they are. Like I'm going to give it to him because he's getting rid of them and I want them and they were cheap. There's no, there's no negotiation that needs to happen on this, but I, I, there are cases where I don't mind saying, Hey, your asking price is fine. Can I, then I say, can I come today or tomorrow? Because if I say, when can I come? There's a matter of, oh, let's see, I've got a doctor's yeah. appointment and I've got yeah. this or whatever, whatever. So I'm trying to move that into today and I'm trying to move it into something that's solid by going, here's my number. Here's the town that I'm from. Here's who I am. Um, and I'll say cash ready. I mean, you shouldn't have to say that, but I say that all the time so that they know I'm coming with the money, you know? Yeah. Um, well, so, so where we got is you find the thing. You're ready. You you want. You're ready to go. You reach out like a human and have a conversation. And for me, if you're if you are not willing to pay the asking price, um, then don't go. 
unless unless yeah. they say they're yeah. flexible you know then then don't go because bus that's the worst thing is showing up and be like oh we're 50 bucks apart mm. yeah so or or there are guys that, that'll say like and i've done that too i sold uh, sold a pickup and and i thought i had a pretty good price on it Guy goes where are you i said i'm absolutely firm on that price i said there's no sense in driving down my driveway unless that much money's in your pocket <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I don't I, mean to be an ass about it, but on this one, hey, I've already discounted. I've already considered yeah. all the things, you know, I'm as deep as I want to get. I just want you to yeah. know that. Yeah. I had a guy show up and buy a Vespa one time. And in retrospect, I feel a little bad about it, but he came over, we hit it off. Like we were, we were BFFs for that 20 minutes, you know, and he wanted to buy this Vespa and we, we were just going again. You know, it's great. Da, da, da. And he was like, would you take, and I think I had it for, I don't know, 1600, 1700. And he says, oh, I'll tell you what, would you do 15? And I was like, no. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. and I, I mean, I, I we're, we're here. We got a rapport. I get it. And sometimes being friendly like that goes a long way and you might get a discount, but don't count on it. Mm -hmm. Like, again, you just yeah. got to, you got to go willing to, to meet that person on their terms. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, so and, let me, let, let me ask you this. What, um, what throws you off the deal? So let's say you saw this Range Rover, $6,000, 2006, whatever. You send a note over to the guy and you say, hey, can I, uh, you know, I don't know, what, would you disclose, you know, I would say, hey, here's my number. Here's who I am. I want to come and see it today or tomorrow, whatever. If he gets back to you and says, yeah, I'm selling this and then says something else, what would, what would say, no, thanks, I'm not coming? If, what, um, what's, the, what's the red flag deal killer for you? Oh, uh, like, Or a couple uh, of those. Well, because th in this one, I actually did call him and we had a chat and um, what threw it off for me was it, oh, oh, and it's now it's throwing some error. Like, so there's, yeah, there's yeah. developments that did not make it into the ad. So in that case, yes. it wasn't 100% of an honest, transparent ad. And yes. So finding that new information, like, oh, well, yeah, it needs a whole new suspension because everything's blown out and my wife drove it off a cliff. Like, oh, well, that somehow didn't make that in the ad you know just that extra yeah. information that's well that's somehow fun. yeah so the unknowns can kill it and, and some guys um like my, mine one mine is always uh uh yeah no keys it doesn't have keys yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. keys or, or it'll say uh keys are 60 bucks it's like no they're not because if they're 60 bucks you'd get keys for it i promise yeah. you you're not going to get a you're going to get it's got to go to the dealer you know especially you know range rover mercedes audi or whatever it's got to go to a guy that really does those kind of keys yeah. it's a 300 dollars to get a key so i guess to me, the, yeah the, the the what the the deal killer for me is is the lack of transparency because yes. those kinds of things where it's like okay this 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 and that and they're still asking a price that is comparable to other things i might still be interested but just that one sort of piece of dishonesty or misleading information tells me they're trying to get rid of it for whatever it is it's just it's it, it may be still a killer deal but that's yep. not something i want to get into because then you're you're bringing home a bucket of i don't know what yes and and i don't want to deal with somebody who's trying to get something out the door you know yep. sort of stealthy all right here's here's three things that kill a deal for me Okay. I call on this Range Rover. I go, yeah, I'm interested in looking at it. And the guy says, yeah, I'm selling this for my son. He's going away to college. Okay. Never buy anything from a college kid. Okay. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> or a kid that's going to college or the ad says, oh, I'm just home for the summer or I'm leaving for college and I'm whatever, whatever the deal is. Don't ever buy anything from a college kid ever because either they don't know, but they're also young enough that they're willing to lie to you. Okay. Well, there's just, the there's, there's bit, no yeah. code. There's no honor in a college student. A college student will rent your Airbnb and shit in the sink. Okay. Yes. That's what a college <laughs> student will do. All right. So no college students ever. Any, anytime the word college comes up, I'm trying to get money for college. <laughs> That's it. I'm out. I yeah. will not deal with this person. There's not a chance that we're going to arrive at anything honestly or fairly in this so yeah. college. The other thing I look at with a real stink eye is new mm -hmm. tires. Huh. Why are we why are we putting new tires on this thing and now we're selling it? I'm thinking huh. what I think what happened was is that the inside right tires balled every three months, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, or whatever. We're talking, yeah. yeah, we're talking about something. So new tires are a flag for me. Everybody puts on, eh, it's got new tires. I'm thinking, why are we putting new tires on this thing and now we're selling it? Mm -hmm. You know, or they That's just put new 
or they just put new tires on it, $800 to $1,000 for new tires, right? And now they're selling it it's because the, the straw that broke their back finally happened. They spent $800 on tires and now the check engine lights on. Yeah. They spent $800 on tires and now it's out of water all the time. You know, well, or whatever. So something has happened to make the new tire thing. The new tires to me is a flag. But that's a signal because what they're and 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 I, I would say like big rims, like up upgrades, quote unquote, like that, because they spent especially on a Range Rover where you know the money would be better spent inside the hood. Okay. You know? Well, that so, brings, that's, yes, why did yes. they spend twelve hundred bucks on rims and not the timing chain? Like Yes. You know, okay, like, that okay. that brings up that brings up one of my other flags. If it talks about the stereo equipment in the car, don't yeah. go look at it. <laughs> if it's like, yeah. oh, you know, it's thirty nine hundred, you know, at this, or fifty five hundred if you want the, the all the woofers in the trunk and the, I don't even know what this equipment is and an amplifier, or whatever. It's like, okay, if it mentions stereo equipment, aftermarket stereo equipment, do not. Go look at that's that car. Spliced wires all in the That is somebody's stereo project. That's not a car. All right? right. It's not for you to drive. So, and then my, uh, there's other ones. There's the last one is like, we have this in Arizona all the time uh, because there's such a trafficking in stolen cars here between here and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So um, what we have here is a uh, uh, bill of sale only, right? Yeah. Or, um, or, uh, 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 they'll tell me that you can't get the title, you know, um, title available. What do you mean title available? Yeah, well, then go get it. <laughs> Title's in your hand, you know, it's uh, whatever. And what you'll find is that it'll be that never ending story. That, yeah, I'm just waiting for this or this is part of a probate sale or this is part of an estate sale. And I'm just waiting for this or whatever. And sometimes that can be worth waiting for if it's the right deal and the right guy. But mm -hmm. if the title isn't there, it is just enough of a hassle. Um, even though, uh, you know, where I live here, we have a very very sane and and reasonable method for titling untitled vehicles. It's, it's easy to get through. Um, but I just don't like the fact that um, the title is, uh, I, although I did see one that made me, I was interested in a BMW and the guy said, uh, the, the ad was the a woman selling. She goes, my, my ex-husband's an asshole and he won't release the title. So I'll give you a bill of sale. It's like, I believe that. So you stole. <laughs> That's you're totally. You're selling his stolen motors. Yeah. Okay. No, but I. But in a way, it's like I can. I can believe her. It's like I can see that a situation where she has my compassion. She's trying to sell this car, get it off oh, her property, yeah. and her asshole husband won't bring over the title. Right now, who knows yeah. what's going on? I don't need to know the backstory. But is it possible <laughs> that an estranged ex-husband won't bring the title completely? Right. Probably. Or if it was the other way around, I'm not just saying it's the guy. If the other way around, but anyway, anybody's ex-lover will not provide the paperwork yeah i get that <laughs> I, I i i'd buy it anyway yeah well so, so but, um all right there's by the way we got to talk about titling a, a, a untitled vehicle at some point uh in in arizona but so say you you're ready to go you talk to him on the phone hey man come on over uh willing to work with you on price it's what you want it's the color you all that you're ready to go you're ready to move okay um be here Sunday at four. Okay. What do you take with you? What do you pack with you? And I'm asking you, and then we can talk generically, but like, what do you take with you? If it's a motorcycle, we'll say motorcycle. Yeah. I always bring, uh, my multimeter, my wire tester, uh, and a compression gauge. Um, hmm. and just, uh, just, just, in, and nine times out of 10, I don't use it, but every now and then someone will say, I've saved myself on a couple deals. I'll say, Hey, do you mind if we just check a little bit of the compression on this? Cause the motorcycle they'll always say turns over good compression. That means that when the, the guy stepped, the guy was able to turn the motor over, there could have been some sort of wheezing death rattle of an air, <laughs> air noise come out of the hole. That doesn't yeah. mean there's compression. It just, yeah. <sighs> air moved. It's yeah. not a, psh, psh. it's a, <sighs> All right. So I want to know the difference between the two. So I'll bring those things. Um, but uh, mostly I, uh, if, if I lived where you live, I'd bring something to lay on so I can get underneath because mm -hmm. I, I get underneath everything. Um, and so if it's going to be wet or in a field, I want to be able to get underneath there because I don't want to be, oh, I don't want to kneel down and, and get my pants muddy. You know, um, yep. I want to be able to go, I'm going underneath there. I'll stay there for a minute, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and people count on somebody showing up and just being like, 
it's ready to go. Well, I'm not going to pull the spark plugs out. I'll bring a spark plug wrench. Like I, yeah, that, yep. that's top, that's top of my, you know, yep. and let's just go ahead and pull them, you know, yep. and make, see if it has spark. Yep. Or a lot of times it just needs a battery. It's like, I got jumper cables. Uh, here we go. Let's, yeah. I brought let's, one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's spin it over. Let's just solve all the problems. I'll bring a battery. Yeah. You know, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good point is to go ready to test out every assumption. I would think. Well, and one to save yourself the grief when you bring it home and find out, but then two kind of you're, you're doing them a, you're not doing them a favor. You're doing yourself a favor by just making an informed decision. Cause like I bought, I don't know what it was, the, the elephant, the, my Ducati, that E900, he was not going to budge on price. And I tested everything I could. There were some things that were wrong with it, you know, and I moved a side panel and then found where the exhaust is. But in that particular thing, I was still going to buy it, mm -hmm. but I, but I made an informed decision and I felt a lot better when I got home rather than finding out when I got home. And then in my head, I'm like that motherfucker, you know, he, oh, yeah. he, he did that. You know, I came home happy and informed. It's like, well, I bought, I bought a Land Rover motor in Utah one time. I drove to Salt Lake city to get it. And this was a rebuilt, a uh, remanufactured uh, Land Rover V8. It's like, great, I needed one. And I get there and I said, hey, is it okay if I take off the valve cover and look? And he says, yeah. So I take off the valve cover and I said, that's assembly lube all over it. Um, and he said, yeah. I said, so that's, so that's been rebuilt. And I said, look at, I said, I can see, I can show you all the, look at all the head bolts have been off before. So you said it was remanufactured, not a big difference. But when you say remanufactured, did you mean that someone rebuilt it or was this a factory? I want to know, was yeah. this a Rover reman? I'm looking for the Land Rover sticker that says remanufactured on it. That's a very specific because, word. Yeah. Because I just want to know what's the difference. And I remember the guy was asking 1400 bucks for the motor. And I said, well, what you have here is a motor that looks to have been rebuilt, but it's been a part. I said, so that means I don't know who rebuilt it. I drove out here from San Francisco. What do you want to do? And the guy goes, I'll take $400 for it. I said, I'll give you $400 for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was a case. It was not at all what I was thinking, but it was still a, a, a you know, totally decent deal. Um, so I sure wouldn't want to have been, I didn't look into the valve covers and just threw it in the truck and came home. Yeah. Yeah. You know, be, so. but we're still, the, I guess the thread here is still be a human talking to another human who may, this person might not be aware that okay. this thing happened or whatever you're giving them the benefit of the doubt but you're just totally. sort of keeping yourself and keeping them honest all right how about um, this how about this this is what i i can see what happens so when someone comes out here um uh i see them coming up the driveway right so i know they're here all right so here they come up the driveway and i have decide sometimes if i go out and meet them in the driveway sometimes i just wait in the house for them to walk all the way up <laughs> You know, it's just, I we're going to see what we're doing. Depends on how I'm feeling, what kind of, what kind of, how the interaction's been, right? Um, it's like, yeah, you're going to have to get me up if I'm going to come out there. Anyway, um, what is, what's going to happen between the thing? Hey, I'm the guy that called you, all right? And um, coming to a deal, uh, this whole interaction, right, of information, tell me what you know about it, what's the story, where did it come from, or whatever. There are some people that are, you just get a feel that they want to know the story. Where did this come from? You know, um, mm -hmm. what do you know about it? Right. And then I get other kind of guys um, that they'll say, well, tell me the story about it. I go, okay, I bought it from a guy um, that said he had the motor apart in Colorado or whatever. And then the guy goes, do you have a receipt for that? I go, no, no, I told you there's no receipts for this. You know, this is, this is just, I'm, I'm selling this as a, as a, you take your chances, you know, but I did a compression check on it or I've had it running, but I, you know, I don't have to make a guarantee. You know, I don't, I don't usually make guarantees I can't make, but mm -hmm. what I notice when I say, Hey, um, it's had this sort of work done to it. And the guy goes, is there a receipt for that? That's a legitimate question, right? Is there a receipt for that? But it's also, it's like, okay, we've already started your positioning for price. That's what this yeah. is. Yeah. Right. So you're looking for a reason to, for, to get me to soften up. And at that point, I just kind of want to go, can I skip the whole Soften up. Oh yeah, it looks like it needs new wipers. Oh, it's got a dent. But walk. You know, there's there's that old school that says walk around and find all the flaws in front so, of. Well, them. that's tire kicking. That's yeah. That's you what know? tire it's kicking. Like, oh yeah, I want to soften you up. Yeah, I want to soften you up or whatever. Yeah. So I don't like I don't like getting softened up. I'd rather just I'd rather just have the number. 
Yeah. You know, um, so it's like, hey, either you can do it at this or you can't. But I so I don't know. Do you do that? Do you go around and say, oh, yeah, I noticed this is aftermarket here. Or There's no tread on that tire there. Um, basically, what I'm asking you is that we're going to get to a number. Are you comfortable saying here's my number or do you feel like you have to convince this person? I don't like to chip away at stuff. I don't like to yeah. do that. Like, um, you know, with with because I've been on both sides of that, like with this, yeah. the BMW I just bought, like it was a game of number. But well, that's a bad example. But I, I have. You know, you have to give yourself, you know, the uh, permission to like consider it, make a considered informed decision. So hell yeah, look around, do the whole thing. But don't, when it starts to be like, oh, there's a, oh, here's the thing. Like chances are you're buying a 20 plus year old vehicle. And unless you're buying it from a showroom or somebody with like NASCAR garage type situation, it's going to be in their garage. There would have been a pile of clothes or a laundry basket put on it at one time. Right. A dog may have pissed on it. Like there's there's going to be some real world impact to this thing. That's not that's, you know, be prepared for that. But yeah. when you start like, oh, this, that, then you should have looked at the pictures. Right. Yes. Like, yes. But I will <laughs> I will do that where I sort of add all the stuff up in my head. And it's not about like, well, that's going to cost me this. That's going to cost me this. That's going to cost me this. Therefore, that's your problem. Take it off the price. That's not their problem. Right. That's your problem, buyer. Like, yep. if you go into this, then you just have to make, you know, be comfortable with a price that allows you on the other side to add that extra 500 bucks. Yep. Okay. And here's here, yeah. Yep. Here, here's something that I think um, that has made me as mad as I've ever been um, at a buyer. And I had a guy do this to me. I was selling right before I left California. I thought I'll take one shot at selling everything to one guy. Right. And so um, I had some interesting, interesting cars at the time. Right. So the guy comes down and his whole point is to convince me how little I know and that I'm wrong about the values. That was his whole point. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how, uh, how do you ever expect that to get to your number? Yeah, you, right? like how I mean, am I? Cause, yeah, because <laughs> now we're we're disputing. I mean, what are we going to do? Going well, I looked at I, you know, I looked it up in Hemmings, you know, and this is the average sale on Bring a Trailer. It's like I'm not going to ever get involved in that conversation yeah. ever, you know. But I don't know for for some reason there are some people that think, well, it's not worth that, and I think that's the that's the worst thing you can say when you're doing a deal with somebody. It's not worth that. Now, it may not be worth it to you. I think it's much better to say, oh, I've got a hard stop at this. You know, I've got a bunch of other projects and this is what I have kind of in, in line for this. And then, um, uh, so, so anyway, it, it leads to a follow-up question. Um, have you ever done a seriously dirty low offer? Seriously low offer. Have you ever really low-balled someone? Um, not intentionally, but at, when I left, I realized that I had super low balled them. So I bought a Boltaco, my Boltaco Alpina, the 350. Um, I bought it from a guy here in Washington state and we, we, I mean, again, I showed up, had a rapport. We talked about him used to flat track race da, da, da. and I think he wanted 700 for it. And I think in the conversation, he said, I won't take a penny more or less. I won't take anything less than 700. And we just kept talking, talking, talking. And then I said, oh, about 500. And like, <laughs> he just told me very explicitly, he was not interested in taking anything less than $700. And he made that very clear. And I just was like, I, maybe I forgot. Like, I don't, I, you know, I wasn't paying attention. I was ready about ready for this bike, but that's the number I had in my head. And then when I left, I was like, Oh, you asshole. You just totally, set him up, buttered him up and then lowballed him. And I, that wasn't my intention, but that's just the way yeah. it happened. And, but yeah, actively, I did it. Yeah, no, I haven't. I did it one time. I was buying a sob and okay. I went to see this guy's <laughs> sob and uh, I got there and he, I, uh, um, I think he was asking 1800 for it. And I said, uh, you know, just a beater car. Um, and I said, Hey, I'd go 1200 on it. And the guy didn't look at me, say anything, just turn around, walked in the house and close the door and shut the garage door. 
<laughs> so I'm figuring, I guess that was too low. I guess that didn't you know? work out. That that's, that's great, um, though. I've, yeah. I've wanted to do that. I have yeah. the balls. On, I have admiration for that. I, but I, to do that. I would say this. I do this on occasion. Um, and like some, there's there's a Jaguar out here that I am dreaming about. It's $35,000 for a 1952 XK120. All right. Mm -hmm. So kind of an unrestored car. I, I, don't, I don't mind that a bit, you know, but but, but kind of there, kind of not too rusty. Um, but thirty five thousand is is way over where I need to be in my current climate. You know, next mm -hmm. year when I sell all this stuff, if I sell some stuff, yeah, I might buy that something like that. But anyway, right now, thirty five is way too much for me. Mm -hmm. But I want to find out, um, you know, again, it's hard to sell an XK Jaguar from the 50s because, Everybody's going to look and say, "Oh, yeah, it can be worth eighty to one hundred and twenty, but that's if you spend one hundred and thirty on it, right?" Yeah. So, so really, a thirty-five thousand dollar core is is too much for the core. And how many people are going to want to bring that, you know, from that state, you know, to the top value? You know, it, it's a losing proposition for somebody. So, I think that there's, I think that they're going to have to be much softer on the price. But I don't want to beat them up for it, and yeah. I don't want to embarrass them because about half the time it's their husband or their uncle and they're deceased. And these are the people that are left with it. And I just don't see anybody, any reason to stand on someone's grave, you know, yeah. and whatever. However, I don't see as an act of charity either. I don't need to open my pocketbook just because this poor guy died. Guess what? Everybody's going to die. We all know it. All right. So, I mean, I don't need to be overly whatever. So, yeah. but I'll do, I, I've done this before. I'll say, Hey, I think, um, I think you're you're you know yeah you know where the jag the values are on that jaguar right it's eighty to a hundred it takes almost it'll certainly take all of that to get it there you know so for a hundred so then to buy it at thirty five and to put a hundred into it to get to a hundred I said that yeah that just takes a certain collector or someone who's you know passionate at at a, at a particular level I said I, I I can't do that I said I I do think it's it, it's you know it's it's got a pretty good value and someone will buy it. I said, but if it needs to get out of your garage today, if this is the kind of thing that it has to go away and you need the space, you know, then, then I can do 20,000 on it, you know, which is a horrifically low offer. Right. Um, mm. but I feel okay because what I'm doing is I'm offering you a chance to settle this. Just get it over with. And if, you know, if this is part of a multi-million dollar estate, $15,000 is nothing. Just get it done and get it out of your hair because I'll come with a trailer and get it. All right. Mm -hmm. But the point is not to say it's not worth that. But I can I can confidently tell you that a $35,000 Jaguar is not worth it. Yeah. All right. It's way too much to pay for the core. Truth is, $3,500 is a stretch based on what <laughs> you're going to have to spend to get that thing done, yeah. you know, or whatever. So only the only people that will buy it for $35,000 do not know what they're getting into or because they have five, they've done five of them and they got enough leftovers to put this together for nothing, you know? Yeah. But yeah. so there is a, there is a place to make a low ball. There is a time for it. Um, but I don't think it's by embarrassing a person or, or questioning their knowledge about what they have. Yeah. You know? Um, and especially if I think if you're going to email a low ball or, or text a low ball offer, go, Hey, that's a great thing. It's, it's, it's certainly worth that. I'm just looking for a summer project and I was going to spend about $2,000 or whatever, you know, and I've done that before. And I've had guys say, no, thanks. Um, and, or I've had I've got one in 20 guys says, come and get it. Yeah. You know, well, that's how the, that's how the van. So, oh yeah. That's what, that's my low ball was the van. And we've mm -hmm. talked about it on the show. I think he wanted 1200 for it. And I offered him $400 or $300. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, I, come I, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yeah. I remember, I think, I don't know if I was, I, we were at dinner with Matt and, and we were, I said, Hey, he's calling me. I gotta, I don't know what to do. I gotta, I gotta, I stepped up away from our pizza and I was like, I'll, I'll give you 300 bucks. He was like, yeah, come all, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. All, all I remember about that was that conflicted feeling of seeing, hearing that you'd offered him 300 made me just I want, I want to throw up my pancakes. <laughs> um, and then later on, I was excited that you got it for 300, you know, yeah. but I just thought, yeah. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I, you, you don't ever want to watch somebody do that. 
you, d you certainly don't want to be there in person when yeah. your friend is like, embarrassing oh. you. If I was well, in the garage with you, you said that I would have just got in the car and drove, just driven away. Yeah, just go, just you're text, on your own, text man. me, text me when you've walked down the block. All right, and that guy's back in his house. But I can't yeah. look at both of you, either of you. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned trailer. Let's talk about you. Um, have made the connection. You're gonna show up to the guy. You you packed your tools. Um, let's say you're still packing. You got to get the thing, and 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 I and I'm saying this because you need to show up prepared to take the thing away. I've had right guys there. show up with like yep. it, you know in a Continental or something, and you know how this isn't going to fit in your Subaru, dude. Um, well, I'll just come back. Well, no, or somebody's going to bring me, and I'll go ready. So that can be fortunately there's options, right? Truck, a trailer. A hitch carrier if it's a motorcycle yeah triple a yeah triple a u-haul 30 bucks like again that's your problem like although i will say i will say this do you ever go look at stuff that you have no business buying i no. Uh, well uh, unless i'm gonna buy it no but no i have i've gone to look at something thinking okay um, so am I, I ask myself that question, am I a buyer? Well, yeah, if I win the lottery at the gas station on the way, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy that. <laughs> but if I, if, but if I don't win the lottery, I'm not being going to be able to buy it. I see. And, but anyway, so there are times that I will go, um, in fact, almost always when I go look at something, I don't take, I take a hundred dollars with me because I want the ability to say, Hey, here's the deposit. I'll be back this afternoon with yeah, the trailer yeah. or whatever, because I need the cooling off. Because I can get there and all of a sudden it's like, oh, what about that? Uh, what about that? You know, whatever. And I can fall into it. So I actually sometimes will, my wife will go, well, why don't you hook up the trailer so you don't have to come back? And go, no, I want to come back. I want to be able to sit on this because I am I know I'm over my head already. And I'm mm -hmm. only buying it because it's a killer deal. But I have to ask myself for the hour on the way up there, on the hour on the way home, that even though it's a killer deal, do I have to execute on it? Because I don't. Because you know the guys that buy every killer deal that they have, right? You know those guys. Yeah, yeah, right. But you, you know, made, what but you made a you, deposit. But you know what their property looks like. Yeah, no. If it's a deposit, I'm doing it. If it's a deposit, it's a, yeah. But I, but I, that's the difference. But I like going because I like the out of saying, okay, I appreciate the time. I really wanted to see it. Um, I'm really on the fence about whether or not I should be doing this. Yeah, you know, I have and, done and that. I, and that's I need the cooling off here because sometimes when you see it. It's enough to say, okay, no, nope, I'm going to be okay waiting, right? Yeah. Or other times you see it and you go, um, no, we get, we're going to have to do it. We're going to have yeah. to do it. Like I had, I had somebody tell me that um, they said, oh, they had a, a, a cracked block, right? Cracked engine. Well, leak, the engine's leaking water. Oh, cracked block, pretty serious, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it was pretty cheap, you know, and I wanted to see it. And so I went to see it. I looked at it, and it was uh, the lower radiator hose was off of it. Right. It was, it was, actually, this brings up another deal. What do you do? Tell him. You know. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I tell him. Uh, yeah. I tell but him. He's but he's put the price out there, and it's not like he's going to raise it yeah. in front of you. No, no. Yeah, no. I, I I tell him. Hey, looks like this hose came off. It doesn't mean that there didn't have a pro that there wasn't a problem because you drove it until you know it overheated, right? So there's still a problem. Mm -hmm. I said I don't know that the block is cracked, but I don't know that something else is wrong. Yeah. So do you want to check further? Do you want to do you want to go ahead and? Uh, a hundred percent of the time they'll go, no, if you have the money, I want it gone. Yeah. You're already, you know, here. but, well, but I don't, I don't want to steal it from somebody who doesn't know what they have. Yeah. Yeah. That's but just, again, being honest and authentic and, and transparent is the be is the better way to go. Well, I, and I say, I, I have gone and done that, not necessarily with the intention of not buying it, but being maybe, again, transparent. Hey, do you mind if I come out after work? and have a look. I'm not going to have a trailer and then, and, you know, ready to take it home then, but I want to at least get, come see. And so that again, just being honest and transparent instead of showing up, you know what I mean? And the guy's ready. I mean, he's got, he's pulled it out of the shed, you yeah. know, and yeah. gotten there, you know, he's gotten a ramp for you and everything. And it's like, uh, you know, you're just saying that up front and having that conversation so that everybody's on the same page about what's happening. Um, but that said, I will, if there's a bike, uh, I will always take my hitch carrier. So I've bought. Yeah, I think I think you're right. On a bike, it's different. You should be able to just go get away with that. Yeah, you know. 
Um, and that's that's easy enough. Yeah, you're probably right. I think a bike would always take the carrier and the straps. And- <laughs> and there's the and the straps and the yeah. you know whatever but there's actually so this is something that's come up hitch carriers so harbor freight has one hitch carrier is basically the the thing you slot into your trailer hitch on the back of your car and it'll carry a full size motorcycle there's a little bracket that i buy for all the ones that i well, have i should say the, you, you, it it will uh... Theoretically, well, so, was, size motorcycle. Was, so that's so, that's what I was going to get. That's where I'm getting. They, they say that 400 pounds is the limit. Yeah, on no. most of them, on the cheap no. ones. Now I've overloaded those and gotten away with it before, but oh it's pretty pretty sketchy. Listen, I put a from I had a little aluminum Harbor Freight hitch carrier, and I learned the lesson by trying to load a full size Suzuki GS750. Yeah, onto this hitch carrier, and I didn't need a ramp. Because I got the front wheel on the side of the carrier, yeah, and, it and the whole enough. thing turned forty five <laughs> degrees, and I I had to put just put it in the back of the truck. But um, a this little there's this little bracket you can get them on Amazon. It's like a U bolt with yep, uh, yep. a real thick plate, and that that keeps the the carrier from swiveling, and that will help. But that will help. if if you're gonna do this more than once, go ahead and get on Craigslist or Facebook and find one of those big black steel heavy duty ramps um and you're good like the little yeah, aluminum ones yeah. will you will if nothing else it'll be a calm mind on the way home yep. knowing that the thing's not going wah, 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 back and forth yeah depending on what your what your vehicle is too is that so we have we both have suvs that we probably use most of the time i don't use my pickup hardly at all um yeah just because it's such a lousy thing to drive on the road. So I'll take the, I'll take the other one. But what I do is that um, if you're going to just to stabilize a bike on a hitch carrier, um, you know, you put it up in the, in the slot and then you tie it down. There's usually a couple, there's a place for a strap on each side, right? And -hmm. you tension it. um, And so it's tied to the ramp. Um, So you're not done tying down. Let me just say that. So you get that on. So then you have to put something around the back tire to keep it in the slot. Because otherwise you can go over bumps and it'll pop out of the slot. So you yeah. got to tire the back tire down to the ramp, right? You're still not done. If you're sharp, if you really want to make sure you make it home with this thing, take a strap from the handlebar um, to the roof rack, and then yeah. take one from the tail to the tail grab or somewhere or the rear shock mount to the roof rack because that'll stabilize that thing on there. Because you're right, otherwise even with the little the little clampy thing, those things can shift so much and just make you uh, just uh, just alarming to watch to either yeah. be behind it. I'm going to pass that guy immediately or when you see that in the mirror. But by taking two extra straps, you can pretty much secure a really, really heavy bike as long as you have that upper and lower tie down. I have a ba- a tote bag full of like 20 straps. Um, you never have too many. And then the cam yeah. and the ratchet. Just have yep. them there. Um, uh, worst case, worst case, stop at Harbor Freight on the way there and just grab yeah. some. Yeah. Not a big deal. They're like 12 bucks. Right. Um, and then the other thing is be ready to do all the work yourself. Yep. Like uh, when I bought this Marini, I mean, I think I told you that like the guy was kind of, he's being a prick about it and I needed help. I needed help. Look, cause I had all the totes. The totes were probably a hundred pounds each full of engine parts mm-hmm. and shit. And I threw my back out and then I had to load the, it's like a, the 500, so it's like a it's a sport bike, so it had the low bars. It right, right. It's awkward to get. It was so hard to get up there, and then it fell over on me, and my hands bleeding, and I'm just blah blah blah. But I was not gonna ask that son of a bitch to give me a hand. Like he was being such a little asshole, and so yeah. it's just pride more than anything. But you got to be re- like, you can't count on you know this 60, 70, 80 year old man's gonna help you, or his wife's gonna help you load the whatever. You got to either go with a friend um, or just be prepared to get dirty. Do it yourself. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say this on the other end. Every now and then I've been helped unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. And I really, would really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you, I bought a, I bought a, a, yeah, I bought a load of telephone poles. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to, I'm going to put up some pole barns here. So I, I, I collect utility poles and they're surprisingly expensive. So anytime I see them from the utility company or anybody who has them, I buy them. All right. So I'm out, I'm, I buy this field full of telephone poles and I'm loading them up and I've kind of got it figured out how I can load them. They're, they're deceptively heavy, right? But I can get yeah. one end, 
one end up on my little trailer and I got a little little uh, roller cart and then I can push up the back end on it. And if I have to, I, you know, I bring my little tripod so I can pull it up with a chain fall and all this kind of stuff. Well, I got to this one and the guy said, um, hey, tomorrow I'm renting an excavator to clear out this whole property. He goes, you want me to load this? I goes, I'll stack them for you first thing in the morning. When you get here, I'll put them on your trailer. Um, I said, yeah, that'd be a killer deal. That'd be great. Um, so I'm going up there and thinking, this guy's going to load these on the trailer. This is really, it takes me all day you know, to load 20 telephone poles. I mean, they're, they're just big around. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, if they're, if they're 30 feet long or whatever, they're heavy. Right. So on the way there, I realized this guy's doing me a solid. And so I pulled over at the loves truck stop and I bought a five gallon um, can for diesel and I filled it up. So it's like $65 or whatever, you know? Um, but I thought I'm, uh, I showed up and I gave the guy the diesel and the can and said, Hey man, <laughs> Thank you. Because yeah. he put those things on there in five minutes, right? And it was raining. Oh, <laughs> it's like, woo. So every now and then, you, every now and then you get a deal like that, you know, where someone offers to help. And I, but like, I'm reluctant to help people load um, when they buy motorcycles from me because I'm not going to be the one to drop it. Especially yeah. like when I sell a nice one, like a, a beater, if it's just parts in the truck, yeah, I'm going to help you load. I'm going to throw them in there. I'll push it up there for you, whatever. But if, uh, like I had a finished motorcycle to my, two of my auction bikes guy came to get. And it's like, uh, I said, Hey, I'm willing to help you, but I not, I'm not taking responsibility for the load, man. I mean, you know, and if he doesn't look like he's done that, you know, how hard is it? you know, the drill, right? If you have a pickup and it's lifted at all, and you want to put a motorcycle in the back of the pickup, you'd yeah. better be, you better know how to make the transition, right? Cause you get that front wheel up there on the tailgate on the yeah. ramp. And then I'm going to, I'm going to hold it. And that guy had better jump up and get in there and get it because we've got to come over the hump now and before yeah. it falls over on either side and it's just going to be whatever. So I try yeah. to, I, I try to avoid that scenario. Um, like not that I don't want to help. I, sometimes I don't want to, but, uh, well, more often but, than not, I don't, I don't want to take the risk of having that go over and having them look at me like, well, I thought you had it. Yeah, like, nope. yeah. Guy, and, <laughs> yeah. guy that yeah. bought the R65 showed up in a brand new Tacoma, and those things are like eight inches higher than my Tacoma. And then he didn't have a trailer because he literally just bought the truck. And I'm like, dude, this is a 400, 500 pound. Bike. What are we doing here? Yeah. And I had to get the the loading trailer off of my hitch carrier that's like four feet long. Yeah, and so, too short. Yeah, and so I, it's like a sixty degree angle going up to the. And I said, "Dude, that's we we better like we better off just picking this thing up." He's, oh, it'll do it. It'll make it. It'll make it. Okay, man. You know, so I said, <laughs> "I'll push you steer," but this is your babe. A cash is already in. I put the cashier in my car already. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, so we're good. And I signed the title, so we pushed it up there, and sure enough, it high bottomed, and uh, you know, and I was like. I'm more nimble than this guy. So I jumped up, hucked it and we got it, but it was just like, dude, <laughs> you know, like what did yeah. you think you were coming to buy? Like, what, well, what well, at that point, it's not about the bike. It's about the pickup. It's like, you got a $60,000 pickup and you're going to go ahead and put a nice, awesome ding in it. You <laughs> yeah. know, well, right here, so, we'll have to watch. So, right. so we got that, you know, and, and I think that there's, there's where, I mean, by the way, we just talked about an hour just don't go in to get a thing. And I, but I think it's warranted. Like there's so many ways that people muck this up and just become a pain in the ass when they're trying to buy something from you. Yeah. I guess, um, I'm glad you said that because I mean, I think that's the lesson and I don't, I don't mean to be telling stories about our, ourselves about, Hey, look at how honorable we are, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, and um, I've through a lifetime of doing this stuff. I've taken advantage of people. I've had people take advantage of me and I didn't like how it feels. So most, more often than not, I want to do it in a way that is for the most part honorable. Um, but, but that said, you have to realize that everybody that you're looking at is capable of not telling you the truth. All right. So, so when you go there and say, yeah, it just needs a battery, you know, um, or whatever, uh, it's like, no, nah, you know, uh, it's like, uh, I like this one. Oh, the AC just needs a charge. The AC works. It just needs a charge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's 11, $11. All right. For a can of AC charge. Right. Yeah. 11, like, $11. Why, did, why didn't you do it yourself you know? and then add a hundred to the price? Yeah. yeah it's a hundred dollars. If you take it in. Right. You don't do that because, you know, it's all going to leak out before you get down to the end of the driveway. All right. So <laughs> so when someone says that, I, I it is somewhat adversarial. I mean, you have to. Right. And you have to allow for that. Like every now and then you buy something and you think, well, did I 
um, you know, should I have offered more or whatever the deal is, is like one, that guy or that person may not know what the problem is and they're, they're giving you the best case scenario so that you'll buy it. Um, or they do know fully what the problem is and they're hoping that you don't ask the right question. So we yeah. do have to realize the fact that there is, I mean, it's, it's a buyer, there's a reason for the buyer beware scenario. Yeah. Um, and you have to accommodate that in your price or whatever, but when, po when it's possible to be fair, um, it usually you should it, do. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, these, 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 it can be, I mean, the most joyful day in our lives is going to pick up something, right? Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, there's nothing more fun that says I'm going today up to this place and, you know, um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to drive to North Carolina, 2,400 miles. <laughs> I'm driving to North Carolina to pick up a transmission. All right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cheaper to ship it? No. Really? Um, okay. Not in the time frame that I need it. So uh, anyway. Um, well, but anyway. So one, so, one, well, so one last thing. Um, okay. And it just occurred to me because um, that's happened to me twice at least is if you go buy a thing and you take it home, and you exchange good cash money, and you got the title and all that, you go home, um, don't ask for a refund if you change your mind. Oh, yes. yes. I've had two different people call me and be like, hey, I kind of overextended myself on this. I, I sold a BMW in San Francisco, and it was just some kid, and for a good price. And he called me within a day and be like, Hey man, can I, can I sell this back to you? Like I, I got, you know, I didn't think about, I had this bill come up or something. And like, no, man, Absolutely I, I mean, not. yeah, Absolutely I, I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, so go clear eyed, you make the transaction and that's your problem. Now that's, that's yep. maybe what it is, is the ownership of problems. Well, and that, that, I'm glad you brought that up because I had uh, I have two things to say about that. One of them, there are certain people, especially if they've been if they've disobeyed the lowball rule and they've been here and they've devalued my my knowledge and my equipment. All right, and they just pounded me down, and now it's finally in their truck and they're driving away. The last thing I do when they drive out of the driveway is I make sure I had the money right, and then I push block on the phone. Because I'm not taking a single call from you, you to you used up all the goodwill that is possible. All right, yeah. I don't want to have you call me and go, "Where's the red wire go?" I thought you said this or whatever. I, I don't want to have any of that because you've already been a prick. All right, now if you haven't been a prick, I'll always take your call. We might you know, be I, best friends. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because I don't want you to have a problem, you know. But I did have one guy that um, I sold a motorcycle to, and I started it for him uh, when I delivered. I delivered it in Phoenix. I started it for him. I put he put it on his trailer, took it back to the Midwest. A couple months later, he ended up in uh, out in the Carolinas with it, and he calls me because he can't get it started. So I was like, oh, hey, I want to help you a little bit. All right, yeah. So do this, do this, do this, do this. And then uh, the second time he calls, he goes, well, I didn't know it was going to be like this, and he's asking me stuff. Um, that makes me aware that he's not knowledgeable, just simply not knowledgeable about how to yeah. get an old motorcycle started. Um, and uh, uh, I say, hey, here, here's the here's the last tip I'm going to give you. All right, um, change all the gas out of it because uh, there's water in the gas. You know, you went from a warm climate to a cold climate in the winter. All right, all sorts of condensation. You know, you're fighting this problem. I said, obviously, it ran when I showed it to you. It has spark. You know, um, it runs on uh, if you squirt some starting fluid in there. Um, I said, you know, you're just going to have to sort this. I just got tired. I was like, I don't have to teach you this, especially when he said, well, I wasn't expecting to have to do this. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know. You bought a 1970 Yamaha. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> There's a fair bit right? of expectation that you're going to have to yeah. work on. So, yeah. so that guy got blocked. That guy got blocked. All right. Because I just don't want to take that call anymore. All right. But here's the here's probably the worst thing that's, that's ever happened to me in the world of motorcycles. I had a BMW GS 1993 um, and I had done just a little bit of performance upgrade to it, um, which we should talk about um, BMW upgrades one time. There's a few little things that are really fun to do. Uh, most of it and, and super cheap and uh, not very invasive. But anyway, I, uh, there's a, an orthopedic surgeon that I used to ride with. All right. Um, wanted to buy it. And so uh, I named a number. It was five thousand bucks. 
And I said, hey, uh, I'll sell this to you for $5,000. So he goes, okay, I'll take it for $5,000. And he comes out a couple of days and he pays me. And then he goes, hey, before I go, hey, could you take care of a couple of these things? And he points out all these little tiny fasteners, right? Oh, hey, can you get this? Can you? So I get a punch list from him, right? Uh, it's like, uh, okay, yeah. Because I ride with you. You know, I see you. You're a friend of a friend. Um, I actually, I've been a, a patient in his office before, all right? Um, so I figured, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a few things here. So I do a few things for it. This is kind of too extensive, kind of irritates me a little bit. But it's like, okay, nonetheless, uh, of course, I've already spent the money on another bike, so you know, I, I just want this done, so I do it. So he takes it home. Uh, this is I sell it to him in January. I remember this, and I get a call in June from him. I've been mad at him since then, right? So I haven't ridden with him, <laughs> and I got, I, I just got worked by him in the deal. And he calls me, and he goes, he goes, yeah, he said, um. I see that uh, uh, I'm getting the bike painted, you know, and uh, he said, you know, that wasn't the, the right color that you had on the bike. I said, well, no, I told you that, you know, I said, number one, I said it was purple when it was new. <laughs> All right. I, I painted it, you know, a color that I liked. If you don't like the color, uh, then, of course, you should paint it. All right. So he's kind of giving me shit about painting it. Right. Yeah. And I said, well, what color are you painting? it? Are you painting it purple? Because no, I'm painting it black. <laughs> Right. So a guy calls me to tell me that he doesn't like the color I chose, so he's going to improve the color, right? He's going to choose his own color, yeah. Which 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 brings up the question: Why in the fuck are you talking to me? <laughs> All right. So then, <laughs> thinking when I couldn't hate this conversation anymore, he said, "You know, also I looked around and I think he said that you know basically a GS, uh, you know, and uh, at this time or whatever, should he said it should have been closer to four four thousand or maybe forty five hundred." Um, he said, um, "Can I get an adjustment on this on on the, <laughs> on, on, the, on that price?" Oh man! Okay. <laughs> this is all right. I've been to I've been to this guy's house, right? Yeah. It's it's unfortunate. It's just unfortunate that he's that big of a prick about money. Well, yeah, you, especially with got, somebody you know, you wouldn't do, like on either it's, side. It's like that's not okay. No, it's there's not anything that's okay, and it's like. Uh, and I guess it's especially egregious to the fact that, hey, listen, you're, uh, you have a decent profession. You have an income stream. I've seen your real estate holdings, <laughs> you know, um, and what in the fuck did you think? Cause you found another <laughs> ad on Craigslist that sold one for cheaper that this was that yeah. one. Yeah. And, yeah. and again, and the overall total that we're talking about here was either 500 or a thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is there is something. Uh, and, and Can I? Tell us, you want to know what his name is? You want to know where his practice is? <laughs> his what name is, is Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Here's his website. Well, so I think it may be worth doing another uh, um, how to sell a bike. Because I mean, we've already talked on a few things. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some there's some you know pains and ass too about if you're gonna if you're gonna list an ad. Maybe reply. Yeah, I mean, like those <laughs> yeah, kinds of like yeah. those kinds of little quibbles that we might have. But um, well, let's let's cut that because uh, I mean, if, if I mean, I'm sure that somebody's gonna like, oh, what about this? Or what about this? Or yeah, yeah. Um, In but, fact, but I, I would think... I would I would urge people that listen to the show go ahead and have them contact you, Andy. Um, with other <laughs> questions or comments about things that they have dealt with in selling or in buying that we should address. Yeah. Well, that said, yes, it's actually at holeintheheadpod.com. We I, we have an email just yeah. for, for when we... And we've gotten some things that we've gotten wrong. And so our email is actually at holeintheheadpod.com. We urge people to correct us. Um, yeah. And, and they have been, so... Because I love it because we, we won't know who you are when you correct us. And so, of course, our first... Um, line of defense is going to be oh well thank you so much for pointing it out and then we're going to say then we're, you know we're going to look at each other with that look that says what a prick for correcting us you know <laughs> i bet they don't know this or i bet they're this or whatever and so when you do correct us we will appreciate it but we will find a way to ridicule you for correcting yeah. us it's yeah. part of the deal it's, it comes with the expectation that if you you have feedback you have to be prepared for how that feedback is received Here's the point. Feedback means that it's on. All right. It's now a contest between us and you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so uh, there you go. Go buy bikes, but do it right. Just That's don't be right. a pain in the ass. If nothing else, your mantra should be don't be a pain in the ass. There you go. This podcast.
podcast is produced and edited by Hole in the Head Moto. Follow along on the socials at Hole in the Head Moto. Or you can send an email to actually at holeintheheadpod.com. We'll see you next time.